Hi everyone, my name is Nate, I'm on the documentation team here at PCC, and today I'm going to talk about best practices for data security at your pediatric practice, and give you a list of things you can do today to help keep your data safe. As a pediatric practice, you deal constantly with personal health information, or PHI, things like names, addresses, phone numbers, social security numbers, insurance information, and of course, medical records. This information can be extremely valuable and therefore a target for hackers and other unscrupulous individuals. So, what can you do to protect your PHI, your practice, and perhaps most importantly, your patients? First, keep your HIPAA policy documents up to date. HIPAA, the Health Information Portability and Accountability Act, is a set of policies, procedures, and guidelines that include rules around health insurance, medical savings accounts, and other aspects of healthcare. Most of the time, when we talk about HIPAA, we're talking about the HIPAA Title II sections on privacy and security. These rules might feel arbitrary or onerous, but in fact, they are important practical measures you can take to secure the PHI at your practice. Second, perform a periodic security risk assessment. You're actually required to do this by HIPAA. Think of the security risk assessment as a physical exam or a review of systems. How could you accurately treat a patient if you don't examine them first, right? In the same way, you can't take measures to protect your data if you don't assess your risk. Performing a security risk assessment allows you to develop and update your HIPAA policies. Okay, social security numbers. One of the best and easiest ways to increase data security at your practice is to not store any unnecessary sensitive data in the first place. It can be tempting to use social security numbers as unique identifiers for patients, but don't do it. These numbers are targets for identity theft. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services have already stopped using social security numbers on Medicare cards for this very reason. So don't store social security numbers, there's no need. Let's talk quickly about your wireless network. As a PCC client, you've already got a segmented network that isolates your server data from the internet and protects it from outside attacks. But the weakest link in network security is generally gonna be the human using it. So, what can you do to help keep your network secure? Never share the password to your clinical network with anyone. Do not share your staff or guest wireless password with patients. If you keep passwords written down, treat them like sensitive information, secure them, and don't leave them exposed on paper, post-its, or otherwise lying around. Also, it's worth mentioning here that PCC does not know your password and will never ask you for your password. Don't give your password over the phone to anybody, ever. So we talked about your network, but what about your hardware? In order to protect any PHI that might be on your laptops or workstations, those computers should always have a password-protected login, and you should always encrypt the hard drives on those computers. If one of your laptops is lost or stolen, it does not need to be treated as a HIPAA breach if its hard drives are encrypted. So far, these steps all sound like good ideas, right? But, of course, they're no good at all if you and your staff don't follow them, forget them, or never learn them in the first place. So your staff should be trained on HIPAA privacy guidelines and on your practice's specific HIPAA policies. There are great resources online at the Department of Health and Human Services and at healthit.gov to help with training. All right, a few more things to consider. What about credit card information? The Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard, or PCI DSS, is a standard established by the major credit card brands to protect cardholder data, and your credit card processors must be compliant. You should periodically review your user lists for PCC EHR and other logins around your practice. Every practice is going to have employee turnover. When an employee leaves, you should make sure to remove their logins for PCC software and any other hardware or software you use in your office. Maybe someone left who was in charge of maintaining your social media accounts. Make sure you have access to all those third-party accounts and services and that you change the passwords on those accounts. Finally, don't share user logins among PCC and any other services. It can be tempting to use the same login or password for multiple services. Never use your PCC login or password for other websites, software, or services. Just don't do it. Okay, so those are a few powerful ways you can help keep data safe at your practice. The bottom line here is that data security is really only as strong as your commitment to keeping it secure. Put a security policy in place, review that policy, train your staff, 
don't share or duplicate passwords, and don't give access to people who don't need it. This was a lot, and there's a link beneath this video if you're watching on YouTube, or to the right of this video if you're watching on learn.pcc.com, to a written version of this content along with links to some of the websites I talked about, citations, and more. Thanks for watching.